Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Look around, you've seen it, you've watched it, it's going on before our very eyes. This is what we've all been waiting for. I'm going to show you today what you need to know as an investor, but also as an individual who's simply trying to monitor all of the activities that are going on. And I wanted to begin by taking a look here. You can see that gasoline prices have surged, stock markets have plunged. You've even seen large retailers like Target and Walmart that have reported worse than expected earnings and profits this week. And why? Because of higher costs and excess inventory that piled up in response to supply chain problems. This is what we've all been seeing. You've watched it and I know I've been covering it here on the channel. Quote, if I had to sum it up, more uncertainty, more inflation, and less growth. Now, you look at this. I mean, Walmart is in trouble. You know there's a problem when Walmart is in trouble. And why? Because you have retailers like Walmart and Costco that are seen as discount stores in, in a sense. So if somebody's having trouble buying stuff, you know, they can't go to all these other fancier places, more expensive places, and buying products that maybe they don't need, but they want. Walmart is one that did very well compared to its peers, compared to other stocks, other sectors uh, during the financial crisis. Now I'm interested to see how this all plays out. Nobody knows what's going to happen this time around. If you looked at the store closures, okay, what stores were closing, let's say 2019 timeframe, and compare that to the store openings, what was the most, by far, the most store openings? It was the dollar stores. The dollar stores were opening like crazy in 2019. That was the only thing that saved, you know, all the store openings and everything that's related to that. I showed you that over and over and over again on this channel. This is the one that I think people should be aware of. It applies to young people. It applies to those who are old. I've got people all around the world that watch this channel, that have watched this channel for 10 years. And you can see this affecting so many people. The five, a $5 trillion wealth shock is cracking Americans' nest eggs. It's not just Americans. All of this stuff applies no matter where you are. Outsized wealth gains that worsened inequality are now in reverse. Housing downturn uh, uh, seen having a broader impact as rates surged. This is always going to be a factor when you see interest rate increases, and we are dealing with that right now. There's a lot of charts in here. Let me just cover a few. Americans' collective net worth have been climbing at a dizzying rate for the past two years. Households piled up an extra $38 trillion from early 2020 to the end of last year, bringing their collective net worth to $142 trillion. Wow, that's fantastic, right? Net worth. Hmm. But what's going on here? Well, the truth is, number one, they've lost a lot of that. And number two is that the debt load is so high right now at a time in which clearly we are either already in a recession or we're heading towards one globally. And the major central banks are saying, we're pulling support. Look at what has happened. You can see this is the US equity market cap peaking out you know, several months ago last year, and it's been declining ever since. It's not just US markets. You look at the same thing going on. It's painful to get back to normal after really being in fantasy world last year. It's going to feel a lot worse than it actually is. Well, we'll see about that. Depends how far this goes. And I'm not talking about stock prices. The stock prices can be juiced up by destroying the dollar. You can destroy the dollar and do a very good job of that. Uh, it's, it's a lot more serious than that. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in a second. I'm talking about food, the food crisis that's going on today. Okay, take a look here. All boats lifted, sort of. U.S. household wealth surged over the last few years, but mostly for the top. That's right, mostly for the top. And if you look at it actually um, on a deeper level, you see that the average person will not benefit. Like if you if you look at these same stats, let's say next year, and you look back at the data into this year, it's gonna look terrible. Uh, downturn in housing 
made likely by a surge in mortgage rates to the highest since 2009 threatens wider reverberations. Over the last decade, the robust real estate market added $18 trillion in market value to owner-occupied home valuations. That's great, right? But what do they say right here? Imminent collapse, U.S. spending boosted by home equity loans is likely to come to a halt. Cash out, refinancing share. So this was going higher, in fact, over 40%. And then we have a big change. Why? This is all predicated on super low interest rates. Hey, I got a nest egg right here. I'm going to pull the cash out. But what happens when that nest egg is hurt? Let me tell you, you get people that are going to dip in to their savings. Where do they get that savings? They can go into their bank accounts. Well, not many people have savings today in that form. They can go into their home equity, certainly. They can do so by borrowing on a credit card and you look at all of the stats and they all add up to the same thing. People push themselves to the edge and now they're in trouble. Simple matter of fact. Absolutely simple matter of fact. The only thing that would save them if it's the stock market and the housing market continues to increase. It has to stop going down right now. If it doesn't, why like, such a large percentage of people are going to be in trouble? Higher home prices and sharply higher mortgage rates have reduced buyer activity. It looks like more declines are imminent in the upcoming months. I do believe that interest rates play a significant role. It isn't just about one thing. You know, uh, we're looking at housing starts. We're looking at permits. No, you got to look at everything. But the interest rates and the amount of money that's being printed is critical to watch for the overall financial markets. Take a look. We are in a crisis. Farmers sound the alarm over coming food shortage. And of course, you can read this. I have talked about it many times before. But you look right now today as it stands, you might say, huh, that's not, there's no such thing as a food crisis. I go to the store, I buy my whatever, you know, whatever people buy, bread and whatever it is. There's no problem. Well, maybe for you, there isn't. But if you look, there have already been food rights that I've been warning about for years and years and years, telling people, watch what can happen very fast overnight. In fact, Peru, Sri Lanka, Iran, uh, was it Kazakhstan? That might have been for a different reason. All of these things, though, happen basically overnight. And now we have to understand that these things can happen locally. So maybe there isn't let's say a US problem with the food shortage, but maybe you live in, I don't know, a drought, really like drought heavy area. It's just, I'll make something up, LA, okay? Let's just say LA is that place. You live there, uh-oh, we got a big drought. Okay, the food's not coming through. Let's just say California or whatever, wherever it is. Now you got a problem and now so they, the supermarkets are trying to deal with that. They're trying to get new suppliers, but hey, everybody's dealing with their own crisis. So they've got these issues and so on and so on and so on. Okay, watch it very carefully. This is something that you will need to take a look at. Okay, watch fertilizer. I talked about this before. Okay, let me just harp on this for one second. Okay, really key. I, had, I have something called the Money GPS Trifecta Method of Investing. And I put that in a very short video that's available on the, on the channel. If you go down to the playlists, it's right there. And I get criticized all the time. You never help people. If anybody would have taken, it's not advice, but it would have taken what I said in that video, well, the Trifecta Method of Investing, which I've talked about many times before, but I made that as a special video for that playlist. If anybody would have taken that, they would have tripled, at minimum, tripled their money over just a, you know, a little while. Tripled their money. So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about looking at the particular trends and investing accordingly. That's it. And protecting yourself. Let's take a look at what's next. Because if you see the markets the way they are today, you got to understand how influenced they are by stimulus. That stimulus comes in many forms. The government could do it, you know, a TARP type bailout. They can do stimulus measures there, throw cash at people, throw it right in their bank account. At the same time, 
They could do quantitative easing. They could buy up bonds. They could buy ETFs. They could do whatever it takes. In China, they have now stimulated more than they have done before. Okay, so that's on right now. They're doing the exact opposite of what other central banks are doing and what other governments are doing. Trailing peers, China stocks are seeking to re regain momentum after losses. So you're seeing the CSI as well as, uh, you know, you met different measurements, MSCI, uh, all country, Asia Pacific index anyway. And that right there, I think is important because if you look at broadly, whether it's the tech stocks or, or whether it's just, you know, Asian stocks in general, they have been pushed down severely. They have been uh, beat down. And when you look at this, it is the big contrarian play today, Chinese stocks. Uh, you know, you could take whatever you want from that. But if you see it, I mean, this is the um, Shanghai index, Shanghai composite. And we look at where it's been over the last while. Like this is 2020. Okay, so this dip down here is March 2020. And you could see it for yourself. Okay, big run up throughout this period, March 2020, up until July 2020. And basically chopped around. It kind of looks like Amazon stock when you think about it. Okay, chopping, chopping. And right now it has certainly been coming off the bottom. The big factor for China is when does the reopening happen? How strong that is. Keep an eye on that and you might know what's happening with the markets as well as the stimulus, of course. History is not on the Fed side. After examining 15 Fed tightening cycles since 1950, the central bank will be hard pressed to avoid a downturn and may need to embark on a steeper rate high cycle than the markets currently expect. That's coming after the analysis here from Bloomberg. I think it's important to see that because if you look at inflation, this is and very well could escalate rapidly with the food crisis. Do you see how this is all linked together and why I do things the way I do? You know, it's hard for me to get that out to you sometimes, uh, but I hope you appreciate it. Okay, all of this together, and that will, of course, have an impact on the economy, have an impact on the markets. So if you see those connections there, uh, I'm trying my best to bring it to you. Treasury's fierce rally gets reality check in hawkish Fed talk. The U.S. 10-year yield reached monthly low amid equity sell-off downward path for yields has been interrupted by surges. What does this tell you? Well, really nothing. What I need to highlight here is that when you look at the markets today, they are being heavily manipulated by the Federal Reserve and have been over this period. And more than anything else, if the Federal Reserve stops buying this garbage, and in mortgage-backed securities as well. Who will buy it? Who will be the buyer of last resort if the Fed will not? And then, of course, you see how uh, there's a global Rolex shortage also affecting Cartier and Tudor. You look at this, seeing how some people, as I've said many times before, whether it's art, whether it's Rolex watches, um, or, you know, some fancy cars, whatever it is, seems to be that a lot of money has gone into fewer hands, has it not? Now, I've got some positive news for you. Indonesia lifts palm oil export ban in relief to global market. Now, you could say what you want about palm oil as a so-called food, uh, but I'm just saying that there have been so many countries which have basically said, hey, we're not going to export our product anymore. And then we run into an issue. Um, this has been lifted. That's good. I hope, I hope that other countries will follow suit as long as it means that their country is doing better off. Okay. This is just showing us more about the stock market. I don't want time to get into it. Just saying more horrors await after $550 billion retail earnings meltdown. So watch it clearly. They're mentioning Walmart. They're mentioning Target. And I would say very clearly, yes, we should be paying attention to uh, companies like this because, in my opinion, they would be the last ones to go. But uh, they're getting hit pretty hard, let me tell you. Okay. I wanted to let you know that this information day after day is being brought to you. And all I ask is a thumbs up. 
If you want the truth, you got to hit that subscribe button. If you don't want the truth, well then, thank you for watching this far into the video. Good luck to you and take care.